Hello everyone, welcome back to the studio. Today I'm going to do something I haven't done in a while, which is talk about my writing. And so I've been working on that the past week or so. Um, so let me, let me get started here. One of the things I, I looked at or I found while I was going through some things is my, um, Publishers Weekly select, and this is a really old cover, but I kept it from November 2013. Um, this was when my first poetry collection was uh, published, and so I submitted it to them, and they put it on the, well, this one of the books that they put um, on the cover. So I was happy about that. They sent me three copies of it and yeah, I've kept it all these years. So now today I really didn't want to dive into um, politics again, but I feel like it's one of those, <laughs> it's going to tie into um, what I'm going to read, the poem I'm going to read today, which is going to talk about race is something that I don't address very often, but there are occasions where I do address it and I want to talk about it or approach it in a, not a cavalier way. So I think, um, one of my poems from over 10 years ago now, is entitled skin and i think that it really just really encompasses my feelings on it so this is out of my my book um prison of despair it is uh it's over 300 pages because it's just it goes from 2008 uh, all the way to 2016 and the three collections that I wrote um, and I published them separately I put everything as one um, book on in this one here so it is um, now it's available on Kindle um, which I'm gonna show you guys later on and I also have it on blurb um, and as a hardcover and on paperback um, and then those two options are going to be available hardcover paper back on Amazon as well. But yeah, I was watching the news yesterday and a little bit this morning and it was just talking about the presidential election and the current president dropping out being replaced by the vice president, um, Kamala Harris. And obviously, I mean, we're going to talk about race for some, but it's like for some reason we're going to talk about race, but race always comes up in the conversation because a lot of people in the black community, I won't say everybody, of course, but it's a lot of people who they just gravitate towards someone, um, as the same race as them. And for me, I grew up different. Um, as a black person, I mean, I just grew up different. I remember going to school uh, and not fitting in. And people were, <laughs> it's like if you dress different, if you listen to different music, if you don't talk exactly the same, um, use the same vocabulary, then you're looked at as, I don't want to say an outcast, but you're definitely on the outside looking in. And so a lot of my childhood I spent um, trying to fit in, basically, trying to fit in. And then I got to a certain age where I just had to come to grips with who I am as a person 
and you know it's difficult to talk about because um i will say like within the black community if you are on the outside people within the community try to label you as you're trying to be well i was told that i'm trying to be white on certain occasions which i don't know how that goes but that's the just the environment the atmosphere um that you can walk into and so by the time i got into my early 20s i really felt um not a part you know of the black community and so i started trying to come to grips with how i was feeling um trying to find my own identity and be comfortable in my own skin no pun intended so i think that um writing really helped me really helped me to um just come to grips with everything so um yeah so this is uh basically in the middle in the middle of the book All right, so this poem is entitled Skin, and it reads, Am I a reflection of my skin? Is the color all I am worth? Does the tone define who I am? Can it tell me how I should act as a man? When I look in the mirror, who do I see? An African-American, black, or simply me? Is my blood red when I bleed? Are my tears sincere when I cry? Are my dreams diminished a lie? Will I fail before I try? I am looking for more because I want to be sure that I am more than the color of my skin. And this was written on January 4th, 2013. There's more that are in the same vein as this particular poem. There's definitely more, but I think this was one of the days where I really felt, um, like I said, on the outside looking in. And I think that I had to get comfortable with not being accepted by everyone. Um, just some people aren't going to like you for whatever reason, but I link it with politics because I feel like you should be elected or accepted, um, based on your character, your personality, how you treat people, um, instead of your race, whatever your race is. And I think far too often we we give people jobs, titles, positions because they fit a certain um, demographic or a certain race or a certain gender. And I think that the people who should have these titles um, are not getting these titles because we are using qualifications that don't really mean that much. Um, and like I, I said before, it's great to have a mixture of people, right? Races, each gender, it's good to have a mix. But I think as you prioritize qualifications, the main priority should be, you know, how good are you at what you do? Are the are you one of the best at what you do? You know, and whatever your your industry is, um, whatever your career career field is, like, are you one of the best? And if you're not one of the best, even if you are African American or whatever, um, then you're not going to get that title that position so you have to work your way up to that point of being one of the best and that's when the position or the title that you have is earned 
But if you're given a title ahead of people who are more qualified because of your skin tone or your gender, I mean, you're going to end up with people in positions who are, you know, mistakes are going to be made. Um, And in certain career fields, I mean, it can cost someone's life, you know. And so I think we've seen that in the world of politics lately, where it's just you have people who are less qualified um, in terms of just their qualifications, like what they do instead of what they look like. Um, So, yeah, I think that that's something that we have to find a balance because I do understand that you don't want just all men <laughs> taking over everything and, and they're all white and, or Caucasian um, in every career field. Of course, we don't want that. But at the same time, it's like, how do we fix the problem? I think the, pend- the pendulum can't swing so far over where you're just giving people jobs or positions because they're they fit a certain race like I'm like I was saying so I think there has to be a balance um between the two and I would say to like minority candidates just work you know work your way um to being one of the best in your field and then the way everything is going nowadays with corporations being more aware of diversity people will find you you know, people will find you. And then when you do get that position, you will do really well in that position because you're one of the best. Um, But like I was alluding to um, a couple episodes ago, is that if you have someone, a minority that gets into a high profile position and they do a horrible job, that hurts everyone else. You know, that hurts all the other minorities who are working just as hard and they are one of the best. And in that case, you know, someone can look over them. Right. Um, So if you're a minority and you get into a high profile position, especially a high profile position and you do a terrible job. It's going to have a domino effect uh, negatively on everyone else. And so. That's why I just don't want to hire someone who who looks the part. You know, just they just look the part. They really have to know what they're doing. Um, Otherwise, we're going to be going backwards in terms of progress. So. Yeah, that's my thoughts. Um, (laughs) That's my thoughts on it. I have. a lot more poetry to go over, um, from the book. And I have to get back to creating, um, promotions and things for it. But yeah, that's, um, that's my thoughts on it. And I would say to people who are, especially in high school, cause you guys will notice that on Amazon, this book is for, it's geared towards 16 year old, uh, young men, um, 16 and up because I think that at that age, you'll be able to process everything that I'm, that I'm writing about. I go into some really, um, emotional topics, uh, things that that guys generally don't talk about. And if we do talk about it, it's not a very mature conversation. And so I really feel like this book can be a help to, um, to people going through that transition, uh, of finding your identity, your, your self-confidence, your self-esteem and understanding the pitfalls that you can, you can get trapped in. Um, 
I think it'll be really helpful. And so what I want to do from this point on is just highlight some of the um, the poems that really stick out uh, to me. And there's there's quite a few. And so I'm just, you know, browsing through it and, and looking at what jumps out to me. Um, there is a lot of especially in the beginning, I would say definitely in the first collection, there's a lot of Christian um, subjects where I talk about my relationship with my relationship with God, um, my struggles in Christianity, um, my addiction um, that took me like years to overcome and just all these things. And I think that men specifically fight with these things, but there's no, I would say like a safe space to talk and express, you know, how you feel. Um, and uh, obviously, I mean, men don't talk about their feelings <laughs> in general and so for me I I needed an outlet for what I was feeling um because I didn't talk about it very much of at all um some stuff so I just started writing everything down and then over the years I started gathering up everything that I've written sometimes it was in a journal sometimes it was on the back of a piece of napkin or something um or whatever scratch paper I could find but just gathering up everything and putting it together. So like I said, um, this book is from 2008 to 2016, I believe. And my work has been, um, the work I've written after that has been pretty scattered. So I have to go back and same thing, gather all the work, um, from 2009 to present day, um, and see if I can put together another collection and as well as write new work um, that can be added there. So that's that's where I'm at um, now. My recording space I have here, I'm in the middle of maneuvering things around just so that I can have a better background. Um, I'm halfway finished, but it's kind of a mess in here right now. <laughs> it's kind of a mess in here right now. So, um, but everything's going to be in a better placement and you guys aren't going to see my, my closet back there anymore. So that'd be good. And let's see, I think what I'm going to go into now, let's see. So all of my monitors and stuff that's over here, I'm going to put that behind the camera right so now when I'm so at that point when I'm looking at the camera I'll see the monitors behind it and I'll be able to go from screen to screen without turning my head so much um so yeah let's see oh and I also improved the lighting by moving the light over here so I think it's so far as off the test recordings I've had it's it's looked better but I'm going to go to, let's see. Okay. Mm, excuse me. So this is the book, this Kindle 499. Um, and they have had a problem with the uh, the paperback and the hardcover, the cover, the book cover. Um, the automated software is not reading it correctly. And so I'm going to have to change how I send them the PDF for the book cover so that um, the automated system, when they send it through, it'll actually accept it. It'll actually accept it. Because it thinks that my cover is bleeding into the spine, which it is, but that's not a that's not an error. <laughs> um, but I do want to read the the little description here 
because I think it's really important just to give people a feel for um, the subject, the style of, of my writing and what's going to be in the book. So it says, what happens when you grow up believing in God while not believing in yourself? What happens when you find yourself isolated emotionally while questioning where you stand spiritually? What happens when lust festers and grows while love escapes your grasp? What happens when these facts are ignored for years while searching for your own identity? My soul cried out, becoming aware of the truth. A reflection in the mirror unveiled the prison of despair built by my hands. How many years had I been there? And what would get me out of my own internal cell? Writing became a positive outlet to release negative feelings. For years I wrote until the prison bars fell and faded, until the lust shattered. I wrote my way to freedom. So that's that's the gist of it. Um, the tone of everything. Now, each collection has its own theme. Um, but overall, I feel I feel like this encapsulates like everything that's in that covers the, the three um, collections. So the let's see if I can switch back. The first collection is titled The Beginning of Me. And I think, of course, that's appropriate because it's more talking about identity and a lot of my identity was in the church, like going to church on Thursdays and Wednesdays and on the weekend, you know, like sometimes Saturday events. And like that was where my identity was. And then I got to the age where I was like, well, is that it? You know, I wanted something in an identity that was more three dimensional Um dare I say, outside of the church. And so I had to search for that. Um, and then it really jumped out at me because I left the church I had been a part of, like growing up, like all of my childhood. Um, I left and, it was, and then I, I felt like I had to find myself and who I really am. Um, you know, like I said, outside of the church. And so trying to balance my own identity, my relationship with God and my faith, what do I believe in, what I don't believe in, that type of thing. And so it was just <laughs> a journey of just discovering um, who I am. And so it's that wrestle back and forth. Um, so the beginning of me, that's the first collection. The second collection of poetry is entitled Speak. And Speak is really just that. Um, things that I never felt comfortable with saying. Um, things that I thought, but I couldn't be honest and just say those things. I put it all <laughs> in that uh in that second collection so yeah like just get everything out get everything out get everything out whether people would agree with it or disagree with it didn't matter just this is what i think and that's it just put it on the table so um it was very uh liberating i guess for lack of a better word to write that that second one the second collection and then finally, the third collection included in the book is Redemption. And that was probably the toughest collection to write because I was able to look back on my late teens, my early 20s, um, and see all the mistakes and all the consequences from those mistakes like see everything that I all the mistakes I made and how that affected 
everything else um, that had happened to that point in my life. And um, I really felt like I wanted to be redeemed, you know, I wanted to be redeemed. And when I talked about this particular book, when it was a standalone, the third collection, I was talking to um, some young teens and just telling them that sometimes your mistakes can cost you a lot more than you want them to. I think when you're in the moment, you're not really thinking about five, 10 years down the road. You're just thinking about what you want to do right now. Um, and you don't consider the consequences and how long those can last, you know, the effects of that can last. And so, yeah, I, I got to that third collection and it was just like, I want to be redeemed. I don't want to be punished or feel like I'm being punished the rest of my life for things that I did when I was younger. Um, and there's no rewind, you know, there is no turning back the clock. Um, you can't get time back. You just, you can't, <laughs> you can't get time back. So if you're 16, 17, 18 years old, or you're, you're in your early twenties, it's like, you just have to lock in um, the best you can and be as responsible and mature as you should be. Um, and then that'll set you up, you know, for the rest of your life, really. But especially going into your 30s, your 40s and so on. Um, it'll set you up for a better future, for sure. If you do things the right way. And my life was just the opposite of that. Um, and by the time I really came to my senses, um, I had done so much damage that it just takes years to repair it, you know. Um, so, yeah that's the third collection um, around that theme and there are certain things that even within a theme there are certain subjects that just are from left field but I, I include them um, in the collections anyway because they're just were, they were just on my mind at the time and I feel like they do have you know still have an important message to them so so there's that um, so yeah, what I'm going to do is after this episode, um, I'm going to go ahead and fix the, the cover because as I contacted Amazon, um, they told me how to fix the file. And like I said before, I'm going to go ahead and, and try that and hopefully send it through the review process. It takes about they say 72 hours, up to 72 hours, but it's like 24 hours. Um, you'll get a, a response back either way, whether it passed the review or you have to fix something on the book for it to be um, to be approved. So, but there's that. And let me see if I can go here. All right. So this is the my author page. And of course, I went by my full name back then, which I just don't anymore. <laughs> my name's too long. So I just abbreviated the, the middle name or use my middle initial, I should say. But this is the author page. Redemption. Forgiveness is a screenplay, actually but I turned it into a novella. Um, Speak, like I said, is the second collection. Um, Beginning of Me is the first collection of poetry. 
from fear to farewell is the same basically as the beginning of me but this one I actually got signed on with a it wasn't a major publisher um, but they were you know they were established but I really didn't like the cover I didn't like how I, di I didn't like the marketing I didn't like how they treated the content like just treated my my work so um i decided to self-publish from that point on and then this is my first uh my first try at creating a children's book um which was a paperback and it didn't turn out very well and so i turned it into a a Kindle ebook and I like the and I, and I did quite a bit to improve the presentation so this is the same book but it's the second edition um, and then even with this one I would say I'm not gonna be able to just flesh out the character in the story completely the way I want the illustration um, especially so I'm going to actually have to find a team to to pick this one up. So there's that. And then with the covers, I changed them maybe two or three times and I might change them again. But. Yep, that's what they look like. And then let's see. This is on Blurb, and this is the copy that I have now, the soft cover. Um, and then the hard cover is being worked on. I think this is the hard cover. Yeah, the hard cover is being worked on. So it's in production. Um, yeah, it's in production. And I'm expecting it to be here before the end of the month um, yeah within the next week I'm expecting it to because I ordered both of them I ordered the hardcover and I ordered another soft cover because I had to make some changes to the um, manuscript so I ordered those um, so yeah so those are ready and then, like I said, Amazon is going to be ready uh, within the next week, probably by the end of this week, if everything goes to plan. And then I did add uh, two more, two more stories. I added a short story and I added a short script to Substack. And I think I've got about seven more stories to add. Um, and then one giant screenplay. Oh, my gosh. Because I can't. I'm adding a screenplay because I can't do anything with it. It's not original work. It's 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 fan fiction. Um, and it's a hundred and. 199 pages so so there's that yeah I wrote uh, it was actually my first screenplay was fan fiction because I went to the movies <laughs> I went to the movies I saw X-Men uh, the first one by I think it was directed by Brian Singer something like that but um I, I just didn't like their approach to it. So I was, we had summer off because I was taking classes, uh, photography classes. And um, in the middle of taking photography classes, I had my English class, it was English composition or something like that. And um, I realized I, li I like to write, <laughs> so, 
So um, I took that summer and I just hammered out a story. Um, your basic screenplay for two hours is 120 pages um, because it's like one page per minute. So I didn't know the story was going to be this big at 199. Um, so yes, yeah, over three hours, if it was actually made <laughs> into a film, actually produced. But um, I, my, my English professor helped me write it. Um, he helped me with the formatting because I didn't have final draft at the time. And I started letting um, my professor read it, classmates read it. I sent it to Marvel. Um, they read it, but they, gosh, they were taking a story in a completely different direction. So, and then part of it, I feel like they've already written in a way. Um, so, but yeah, they, they liked it. Um, they sent me a really nice letter back. Uh, and this was years ago. This was years ago. They sent me a really nice letter back and it just gave me confidence to continue to write. Now, what am I working on now? Where is it? Hold on. This is my other stuff. Can you guys see it? My other stuff. So that's my other writing. Um, this is my screenplay that I want to get, um, produced and I had an executive producer, director read it. Um, he gave me some things to tweak and now I have to resubmit it to um stage 32 but i don't think i'm gonna submit it to the same uh script reader i think i'm just gonna throw it in a general pool because um the executive i sent it to he was he specialized in uh christian films um and so now i want someone else's um eyes to kind of look through it and read it and, and give me their their feedback on it and see what they they see what they say and um if i get two recommendations on it because he gave me one out of two so <laughs> so if i get two recommendations on it then um they will submit it to their pool um of producers and directors etc and they'll be able to um to read it so and they're in california so they're they they have all the connections um and yeah i mean as i said before i'm gonna continue to work on the photography on the side but my main um, focus is shifting towards the writing because I feel like there's a lot of um, subjects, a lot of content that I can talk about. And as I was looking over my book, I was like, <laughs> there's so much stuff here to talk about um, and, and just conversation starters. Um, so I, I feel like there's a lot of um, content for me to add to the, the podcast on YouTube and on Spotify. Um, looking over the numbers, I think people, well, on the Spotify side, they tend to lean towards the political and the social issue um, subjects. Uh, I seem to get more views more more listens um for that 
And so I'm going to try to integrate that and have open discussion about things um, and then try to integrate my work into that. And yeah, Um, I guess the only other thing that I need to do for my setup after I finish like rearranging everything in here is my microphone. I'm probably going to replace it with a... uh, I don't know if it's a lavalier um, or a different mic because this one, it picks up everything, you know, it picks up everything, everything. And sometimes um, you can hear the folks in back of me, um, (laughs) the folks over here. It's like, uh, and then I have neighbors there across the street. It's like when I'm recording, it picks up a lot of stuff. So, um, I want something that's more directional. Um, so I'm looking into that as well, but I'm kind of budgeting everything out because at the same time I ordered, well, I'm getting all of the prints ready for my photography portfolio. Cause I have to update that and they are pricey to (laughs) to print um they're pricey so i've got most of everything i want now in a cart yeah and so within the next week i'm gonna go ahead and order that um and then when they come in i'm going to start sharing the actual prints with you guys as well because right now um, you guys really haven't seen my work <laughs> besides the stuff that's on social media. Uh, so the actual prints will be here. I have some of the work here, um, with me now. So I have to clean it up because, oh my gosh, that's there it is. So I have three of these. I have three of them. Um, and then the fourth one, I tweaked it. I changed the, I changed the dimensions on it, like permanently changed the dimensions. So now the one that I did print out in frame, it's just a test print, really. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna be going into all of that. <laughs> All of that, um, what I do have here on hand, I want to photograph it and add it to the store for sale um, so that I can free up some space (laughs) in the room. And um, and again, once I get done or reorganizing everything, um, I'll have more more breathing room. So there's that. Um, oh, and one more note that I do have. This story, she knew who I was. It is on Substack. I will leave the link um, to just the, the general profile page of, for Substack. But um, again, I'm going to add seven more stories along with this one. This is probably, if not the most popular, the second most, it's definitely in the top three of all the stories I've shared. And it's not a Christian story at all. Um, it's more fantasy, fantasy romance, I want to say. Um, suspense. It's a mixture. Fantasy, romance, suspense. It's definitely a mixture. And like I said before, it's like I want to stretch my <laughs> um, stretch my writing, just not write about one particular genre um, and just see how people react to it. And I'm also testing out how well or not well, uh, how well I can write a female lead character 
um, test it out, right? So in that particular, in this particular story, I want to say the male is the lead, but yeah, she, the the co-star, definitely the female uh, character, and just get a feel of how well or how much improvement I need on on that character. Um, while in the screenplay that I'm um, gonna pitch, it surprised me because when I got my feedback from the script reader, the character that he said was his favorite was a female character but she wasn't the main female character she was like a um, supporting actress um and i had a really a lot of fun writing her character because she just reminds me of some <laughs> some people i've run into over the years and so i put all those into that character just her personality her style her attitude her just she really had like a really a strength about her i don't say she could be snarky but she can definitely be sarcastic um so i had a lot of fun writing that character because she was definitely a lot different than the main character and so i kind of used her to play off the main character in the in the screenplay um because the main character his personality's more like mine um and so when they interacted, I wanted to have that balance there, right? And for her to kind of pull certain things out of him um, and vice versa. So I think it's things like that where, um, and even though this particular one is a, is a Christian screenplay, I didn't want it to be like, I don't want people to come to the theater and view it as a Christian film, um, even though it definitely is that. Um, but I want them to just popcorn, soda, raisinets, watch a movie, watch, you know, a good story. And um, and of course, there's going to be themes, messages, but I didn't want it like just smack in your face, right? Um, I wanted a lot more finesse and I think a really good example that I used, believe it or not, was the Jim Carrey movie, Liar, Liar. And when you watch Liar, Liar, like you get the, the message behind it, but they didn't give you that message in a boring way. They just put the character in so many funny, um, predicaments throughout the film but then you still got it, right? But the you still got the message, but it didn't come across as boring or preachy or a sermon or anything like that. And so I kind of use that that film in general in terms of style, in terms of approach to really look at my screenplay and say, okay, here's the message, but how can I tell the story and give the message without it being like putting people to sleep or making people feel like they're sitting uh, in a church listening to a, a pastor or something like that. So um, I, I, I think I tried to make it as normal um, as possible because I think that those types of films are more effective um, when you're trying to share what you think is an important message to people. So, so that's where I am. Um, yeah, I think that's it. So I'm going to be back, uh, next week and unless something else just pops up, <clears throat> something else just pops up. And yeah, I'll be back next week with the updates. Um, the thing is, I'm not sure if the prince will be here next by next week. 
So if not, I will definitely go back into the writing and I might do that regardless um, and share another poem with you guys. But I think with the poem that I share for today, I think the message I want to leave you with is for me in my life, it doesn't really matter. Um, like I get the importance of race. Um, I get the importance of it and I get the, the reason that why we have black history month and we just highlight, you know, different races and things like that throughout the year. But I think that it can't be the number one thing that we focus on. And so I usually tell people that it's better for us to look in a person instead of looking at a person. Um, yes. It's always better for us to look in a person instead of at a person, because if you look in someone, you have to go past the shallow the exterior. You have to look in that person's heart, learn about who they are as a person. And it's not all about just what you see on the outside. Um, so. And of course, our race and everything like our culture is part of our story. But when it gets out of balance, it just causes so many problems. So you have to keep a balance on everything. You can't have this number going <laughs> like this. So hopefully um, we get better at that. And I think that as I've been watching the news, um, I think we're going in that direction and I think that we have to, because I think that the race card that we call it has been used so much that people are getting tired of it. Um, Cause I, I was always thinking like, if someone tells you you're doing a bad job, you can't just blame it on race. Oh, it's because of my race. So uh, we definitely have to look at people like look in instead of at a person and go by their their character, the character of that person. And I think we'll all just um, have less headache, less drama uh, if we do that. So thank you all for tuning in. Um, I do apologize for the any exterior noise that you heard earlier, but, um, I'll see you next week. Everyone take care.